Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today. My name is Jessica Closa and I'm proud to serve as the first Filipina American Commissioner on the Board of Public Works. I'd like to welcome you to the opening ceremony for the City of Los Angeles' celebration of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. I'm here joined by my Heritage Month co-chairs, Councilmember John Lee and Councilmember Nithya Raman. Our theme this year is Unite, Empower, Rise. Words that speak to our experience this past year and propel us forward to aspire to more. Today as we kick off a month-long celebration of the history and culture and achievements of the Asian American and Pacific Islander community, a community that has played an integral role in shaping our city and nation. We don't often hear those stories or that part of our history, but if the events of this last year has taught us anything, it is that we must talk about the AAPI experience. We must, we must learn our history and we must tell our stories because our stories are part of the American history. This year's celebration is especially significant following a year of increased attacks and hate directed at the AAPI community. It's been an incredibly difficult year, but I have also witnessed a lot of strength and unity, and that gives me hope that calls for change to make sure our voices are heard and represented. And these are just the beginning of our community's move towards greater empowerment. Before the program gets underway, I'd like to introduce Clara C who will be performing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home? That was amazing. Wow, that was beautiful. We have a great program in store for you today, including performances and guests, followed by the presentation of the 2021 RISE Awards, which stands for Recognizing Inspiring Individuals Who Elevate and Empower. This year, we are pleased to recognize journalist Lisa Ling, California's new Attorney General, Rob Bonta, actor Alan Lee, the nonprofit organization APCON, which stands for Asian Pacific Planning and Policy Council, led by Manju Kolkarni, and local Asian American business owner, Johnny Lee. At this time, we have a few special guests who have joined us to offer their remarks. First, I'd like to welcome our mayor, Eric Garcetti. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for being with us here today. Well, thank you so much, uh, Council Member Lee. Great to be with you, and Council Member Rahman. Thank you for your co-chairing and your great leadership and for all of us being able to come together to celebrate the common heritage of Los Angeles, also through the Asian American Pacific Islander heritage across this country. And I wanna start by thanking not just you, but also Commissioner uh, Jessica Colosa, who represents us all on the Board of Public Works, because May is a month we all deep dive into our own history. For some of us, it's our direct cultural links, but for all of us collectively, we know the original inhabitants of this land came from Asia, across a land bridge, that some of the earliest immigrants that built this city and made Los Angeles so strong had their ancestry traced back to Asia, the Pacific Islands, and to Hawaii. We also know that the original pobladores who set forth 
from what is now Northern Mexico. Two of them were classified as Chino. They were actually not Chinese, but Filipino. And we're not able to finish the journey, but we're part of the original pobladores who settled Los Angeles and gave this pueblo its name. This is a time when we must mark our history if we are to make our history. We must know both the bright and the dark chapters of the past to confront the challenges of today. When we look at a time when we're confronting a horrible spike in violence of fear in the Asian American communities, the native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander communities that comprise so much of the strength of this city. We've seen hate crimes against AAPI Angelinos more than double in the last year, which is why we speak with one voice, that there is absolutely no place for this, that we will empower you to react and to respond, and that we will be there to protect and to co-author a city's chapter, which makes sure everybody here belongs, just as everybody that has been here has built this city and its strength. This is a city that has no tolerance for violence, bigotry, hate crimes, or discrimination. And it's up to each one of us to own this, not just Asian Americans and Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders, but all of us, to make sure this is a month of action, of protection, of belonging, and of course, of celebration and culture. And I know that we are doing that collectively, that I have a group of leaders that I co-govern with and regular everyday Angelinos who know this year especially that government can't do this by ourselves. We have to do this together. I've never felt as optimistic as I do right now in this last 12 months. I think I've never felt as tired as I do in my entire life. But all of us feel that duality of the hope that hangs on the horizon, as well as everything that we've gotten through. And I wanna congratulate the awardees, the honorees, who are extraordinary. Rob Bonta, a dear friend who I've known since we were in graduate school an ocean away, um, and we dreamed one day of both being able to change the world together. You are blazing a trail, which Filipino Americans are proud of, which puts Filipino Americans in their rightful place, whether it's in the farm worker movement or as the first elected Filipino American assembly member, and now as our state's top cop attorney general. Rob Bonta, I'm so proud of you. Uh, Tamanju Kulkarni, through your leadership of the Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council, which has not only done amazing things for Los Angeles, but is a national organization leading. We are a better place um, because of you and the work you do to inform, protect, and celebrate 1.5 million Asian American and Pacific Islanders who live here. And my dear friend, Lisa Ling, who I've uh, been together on so many causes and so many stories. We love your expertise, your humor, your storytelling, the way you connect us and make us feel what life is about. Um, and Alan Kim, you've made an extraordinary debut, one of the best movies of 2020. This is one more award for your shelf. I'm sure it's bigger than anything you'd get, you know, like an Academy Award, but we know there are many more to come. And Johnny Lee, the owner of Koreatown Plaza Company, Pizza Company, excuse me, um, this past year, you've literally helped sustain me and my family. And you stepped up in a big way to support your fellow small business owners in this pandemic, always looking for ways to make a difference and to prove that this truly is a city of angels. So thank you everybody for joining us in the celebration and make sure that we don't just learn something, but that we do something in this month. Make this a month not of history looking backwards, but history making looking forwards. Have a great May everybody and thank you. Thank you so much for those remarks. Um, now I'd like to introduce city attorney, Mike Fewer. Thank you so much for joining us, Mike. I, I think that means I'm up. Hi, this is Mike Fewer, the city attorney. Let me just be sure that, yes, um, I am so privileged to be with you today uh, at this year's AAPI Heritage Month celebration. It is an extraordinary year. Uh, we're celebrating not only AAPI Heritage Month, we're also celebrating the fact that we are emerging from the pandemic. But at the same time, we're very mindful of what a challenging year it has been, especially for the AAPI community. Uh, I wanna underscore that my office stands in deep solidarity with the AAPI communities of our city. Uh, I have been you know, from Koreatown to Thai Town with members of the community standing up and saying no to hate. And my office has been working for well over a year to try to assure that members of the community feel comfortable reporting hate crimes, that they know that we are here to team up and stand up for victims of hate crime and that we are gonna hold perpetrators accountable because in our city, we stand unified in favor of respect 
and understanding and enriching each other. And we stand firmly against hate. I want to say that it's a privilege at this moment to recognize our honorees. Uh, the mayor did a wonderful job of describing each of your achievements. I want to say, Manju, uh, it has been a pleasure to collaborate with you on the very work I was just discussing. You are such an extraordinary leader. It is a privilege to be with all of the honorees today, Lisa Ling, Alan Kim, and Johnny Lee. Thank you all so much for the incredible contributions that you continue to make to enrich our lives. And I want to take a minute to talk about our new attorney general, Rob Bonta. Uh, our offices, the city attorney's office and the attorney general's office, worked very closely on so many issues. And it was with great excitement that we learned that, Rob, you are, going to, you are now the attorney general of our state. Uh, you're the right man at the right time to meet this moment. Your history of standing up for social and economic justice, fighting for the most vulnerable residents of our state, uh, your political background, your leadership background, all those factors come together to make you, as I said, the right man for the right time at this crucial moment. Congratulations, Rob, and to all our very worthy honorees and to everyone who is watching today, let this be the most rewarding and meaningful API Heritage Month that any of us has experienced. This year, we celebrate virtually. I can't wait for next year when we can do it together. Thanks very much. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you so much, um, City Attorney. Finally, I'm pleased to welcome City Controller Ron Galperin to offer his remarks. Welcome, City Controller. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Council Members Ramon and to uh, Lee and to our Commissioner Jessica Kaluza for bringing us together to really celebrate this rich history and the great contributions of our Asian American and Pacific Islander communities. And congratulations to an amazing and wonderful group of honorees. This month is a wonderful opportunity for us to celebrate and to recognize how intertwined LA's social and economic and political and cultural fabric is with our AAPI communities. LA is home to a diverse, uh, diverse group of Asian Pacific Islander neighborhoods, including of course, Chinatown and Little Tokyo and historic Filipino town and Koreatown and Thai town and 9% of LA's population is AAPI. And in our city government, 16% of our workforce is AAPI. And by the way, I'm really proud to say that in the controller's office, 61% of the amazing people who work in the controller's office are AAPI. We also really employ the highest percentage of Filipino employees in the entire city, 21%. But you know, as we celebrate these many rich cultures and accomplishments, we've also got a long way to go. Today, anti-Asian hate is on the rise along with racism and homophobia, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, xenophobia. And I never thought that I would have to be going to rallies as I did in the last couple of months of anti-Asian hate. It was really shocking and so distressing and a reminder of how much work we have to do as a society, as a city, as a nation, as a world. And we have to unite to condemn this kind of violence because there is no room for it here in Los Angeles. As Dr. Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So we come together, we celebrate, we enjoy, but we stand in strength and in solidarity and in celebration. Wonderful to be with you. And may this be a terrific and wonderful Heritage Month for everybody. Thank you to our city leaders for their remarks and for joining the three of us to mark the start of the city's celebration of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Now we have a special performance by the Huarang Youth Foundation. Founded here in Los Angeles in 2006, the Huarang Youth Foundation began as a community-based youth enrichment organization with a focus on helping foreign-born youth navigate their path in a new culture and society by valuing their cultural heritage while teaching and empowering them to become engaged in their new communities. 
Today, Huarang Youth Foundation has grown into an international organization, fostering youth leadership and development with a focus on how they can give back and have a positive impact both locally and globally. Please join me in welcoming the Huarang Youth Foundation as they share a traditional Korean drum performance with us. Wow, what an energizing performance. Thank you again to Huarang Youth Foundation for being here today. Now I have the pleasure of introducing our LA City Council President, Nuri Martinez. It is an honor to be here today to kickstart the Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. It is important to celebrate our city's cultural diversity as well as the many contributions of Asian Pacific Americans throughout Los Angeles. People from around the world have made our great city their home lending their rich heritage to enhancing our communities and our culture. In celebration of this month, we are here to highlight the important contributions of Asian Pacific American leaders, leaders who have used their platform to educate others on the Asian American experience, who advocate and who give back directly to their communities. So as we celebrate this month, we must remember both the many contributions the Asian Pacific American community has made, but also we must confront the challenges in order to ensure that all Angelinos can achieve their American dream, regardless of their race, ethnicity, religion, or language ability. So as we celebrate this month, we must show our solidarity and strength. It's now more important than ever to come together and take pride in our identity and celebrate our uniqueness. Thank you and enjoy the celebration. Thank you, Council President Martinez. And before we get to our next performer, I'd like to welcome LA County Supervisor Hilda Solis to offer a few brief remarks with us. Good afternoon and happy API Heritage Month. I'm Hilda Solis, Chair of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, and I'm proudly 
able to represent the first district, which includes a large segment of the county's Asian Pacific Islander population. I'm so honored to be here virtually to join in the celebration of the Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And I wanna especially thank Mayor Eric Garcetti, Council Member Nitha Raman, Council Member John Lee, and Chairwoman Jessica Colaza for organizing this important event. The first supervisorial district that I represent is home to many inspiring and talented individuals of Asian and Pacific Islander descent, many of whom are longtime partners of my office and public servants dedicated to our communities. I've had the honor of representing Chinatown, Little Tokyo, and historic Filipino town, as well as large swaths of the San Gabriel Valley for many, many years. And it pains me to think that our communities are being attacked by anti-Asian hate acts and crimes. Unfortunately, as we celebrate Heritage Month, we know that these attacks are not new. And that's why it's so important to elevate and recognize the many inspiring individuals of API descent. And it's why we must call out bigotry, whether big or small, and reaffirm our commitment to our API brothers and sisters. And as we continue to celebrate this Heritage Month, let us recommit to protecting one another and to center the voices of our most vulnerable. Right now, our API elders are scared to go out even for a walk or get on a bus. This is totally unacceptable to me. And this is why at my direction, the county is expanding our anti-hate program to accurately report and track hate incidents, but to also get survivors of hate, the counseling and the services that they deserve and need. And I encourage everyone who has witnessed or experienced an act of hate to report it out and call 211 our hotline or visit laversushate.org. I wanna thank you again and let's celebrate our a API brothers and sisters on this month. Take care. Thank you so much, Supervisor Solis. Now our next performer you already heard uh, performed the national anthem earlier, but now I can formally introduce her. Clara C, as she is known professionally, is a music artist who rose to fame by win winning talent competitions while posting her original content on YouTube. Clara C is a self-taught multi-instrumentalist who writes, produces, and directs her own content. She has performed at such venues as the Hollywood Bowl, Walt Disney Concert Hall, and for the U.S. Department of Education. Clara C's music has been featured in commercials and film and television across the globe. Here to perform her original song, Quesadilla, which is about finding your voice and not being silenced. I present Clara C. Congratulations, Los Angeles City, and happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Thank you so much to Mayor Garcetti, Councilman John Lee, Councilwoman Nithya Raman, and Commissioner Jessica Colosa for helping co-host this ceremony where we can celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. above all the rest It's being silenced by your noise I should have guessed The question lies after your lies undress Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, do I sing for all? Sing
Wow, what a powerful performance. Clara, thank you so much for sharing your song with us today. I am so excited now to introduce our 2021 RISE Awards. The honorees this evening have all played an important role in helping to move the AAPI community forward in different ways, whether it's through the medium of news, film and television, government and policy making, community education, organizing or entrepreneurship. It is so important to recognize the work of these individuals and to celebrate and push for greater representation of AAPI voices in our communities. Now to introduce our first honoree, I'm gonna turn it back over to Commissioner Coloza. Thank you so much, Councilmember Rahman. Uh, for our first award presentation this evening, I am honored to present the 2021 RISE Award for Journalism to Lisa Ling. Award-winning journalist Lisa Ling is the host and executive producer of the CNN original series, This is Life with Lisa Ling. In each episode, Lisa immerses herself in communities across America, giving viewers an inside look at some of the most unconventional segments of society. In 2017, the series won a Gracie Award. Before coming to CNN, Lisa was a field correspondent for The Oprah Winfrey Show and contributor to Nightline and National Geographic's Explorer. She has reported from dozens of countries, covering stories about gang rape in the Congo, bride burning in India, the Lord's Resistance Army in Uganda, among other issues that are too often ignored. In 2011, her acclaimed documentary series, Our America with Lisa Ling, began airing on OWN. Lisa got her start in journalism as a correspondent for the Channel One News, where she covered the Civil War in Afghanistan at 21 years of age. She later went on to become a co-host of ABC Daytime's hit show, The View, which won its first Daytime Emmy during her time at the show. Lisa has also served as a special correspondent for CNN's Planet in Peril and is a renowned author. In 2014, President Obama named Lisa to the Commission on White House Fellows. Throughout the last year, with a rise in hate crimes against the Asian American community, Lisa was one of the first public figures to not only decry the incidents and mobilize others to seek change, but she used her platform to educate others about the Asian American experience. She has been a staunch advocate for the Asian American and Pacific Islander community and all marginalized community. It is my great honor to present the 2021 RISE Award for Journalism to Lisa Ling. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Commissioner Coloza. I am deeply humbled and honored to receive this RISE Award from the City of Los Angeles during Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Thank you to my dear friend, the Mayor Eric Garcetti and Council Members Lee and Raman for recognizing me. And it is particularly significant on this day because on May 6th, 1882, an executive order was signed that banned Chinese immigration to the United States, an act that would not be entirely overturned for over 50 years. So to be honored today means more than you will ever know. I'll be honest with you though, growing up in Carmichael, California, I hated being Asian. You know, it wasn't the most diverse community back then and having an Asian face made me feel different from everyone else. And I was seen constantly and really suffered from a serious identity crisis. I never felt entirely American, but I didn't look like everyone else, nor did I really know anything about being moved to China. When I was 17, I moved to Los Angeles to attend USC. And the moment I did so, this whole world opened up to me. This city, one of the most diverse on earth, just welcomed me with open arms and introduced me to a vast array of cultures that excited, inspired, and enriched me. We're here in the city of Los Angeles that has the largest concentration of so many Asian ethnicities in the US that I grew to not only fall in love with my Asian, but to wear it as a badge of pride. I mean, the Asian food alone here in LA is just the best, it's unparalleled, right? And we all know that it's been really hard for those of us who look like me uh, and so many of uh, those on the Zoom uh, we've been dealing with two viruses, COVID and the insidious virus of 
But the truth is the virus of hate has infected our community for generations. In fact, from the moment Asian people first arrived in this country, we've been on the receiving end of hate. In the 1800s, one of the worst lynchings in American history happened here in Los Angeles, China, Los Angeles' Chinatown. Our stories have been erased from American history, uh, and Asian American history is not taught in schools, and that has made it so much easier to overlook us, to stereotype, and even speak to us. But something powerful is happening. Out of a crisis, a movement is gaining strength, and Asian Americans are standing up and demanding to be heard. We are 23 million strong in America and the fastest growing minority group in the country. We are coming out of the shadows and writing a new chapter of Asian American history, one in which we stood up against hate. We locked arms with one another and members of other communities who resist discrimination, scapegoating, and invisibility for ourselves, but for all Americans. And so I thank you so much for this honor. And here is a powerful video that I was so lucky to participate in, directed by Bao, uh, Bao Wen, that provides a window into our collective struggle, but also our collective strength. On March 16th, 2021, six women were among the victims of a horrific shooting in Georgia. They were grandmothers, mothers, daughters, sisters, and wives. They were killed because they were Asian. But anti-Asian violence is not new. It is part of our collective memory. As the families in Georgia mourn and memorialize the lives of their loved ones, we remember the history of racism our community has faced. In 1875, the Page Act passes banning Chinese women from entering the United States. It's the first federal law to limit immigration. In 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act passes, prohibiting Asian immigrants from becoming U.S. citizens. Its discriminatory practices survived for over 80 years. In 1885, 28 Chinese Americans are lynched and murdered in Rock Springs, Wyoming. 1930, across California, hundreds of Filipino American farm workers injured and scores killed by rioters. 1942, 120,000 Japanese Americans incarcerated in concentration camps by our own government. 1982, Vincent Chin beat to death by two men with a baseball bat right before his wedding, mistaken for being Japanese, accused of stealing their jobs. 1989, five Vietnamese and Cambodian children killed, more than 30 wounded, Stockton, California. In the wake of September 11, 2001, attacks against Muslims and South Asians surge. 2012, six Sikh Americans killed in a temple in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. This past year, almost 4,000 incidents of anti-Asian violence including murders of our elders simply walking in their own neighborhoods. Memory is the antidote to death. Solidarity is the answer to silence. As activist Valerie Kaur once asked, what if this is not the darkness of the tomb, but the darkness of the womb? Today, we birthed something new knowing it's up to all of us to keep each other safe and shine a light together. Wow, what an incredible video, not only highlighting what's happened this last year, but really throughout the history of this country. Um, you know, at this time, I have the distinct honor I'd like to welcome our Congresswoman, Judy Chu, representing California's 27th Congressional District and Chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. Hello, I'm Congressmember Judy Chu, and as a representative from Southern California and as Chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, I want to wish you all a happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And I want to thank Mayor Eric Garcetti, Councilman John Lee, 
Councilwoman Nithi Rahman and Commissioner Jessica Coloza for co-hosting today's celebration. This has truly been a year unlike any other, especially for the AAPI community. Our communities have experienced disproportionately high infection and mortality rates from the coronavirus and are also facing some of the worst rates of long-term unemployment. And on top of that, xenophobia and slurs like China virus have led to nearly daily attacks on Asian Americans with over 3,800 reported anti-Asian hate crimes and incidents in the last year. But there's much to celebrate this year as well. After years of being invisible, AAPIs are finally having our needs and experiences included in national conversations, including the Oval Office where just last month, President Biden invited me and other AAPI leaders to discuss how we can help stop Asian hate. And our visibility is growing as well. I'm so proud that this year we have a record 21 AAPIs in Congress, our highest number ever. And not only that, in January, we swore in Kamala Harris as our first woman, black and Asian vice president. And so this Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, I want to celebrate the diversity and contributions of our AAPI community. From Oscar-winning director Chloe Zhao to Vice President Kamala Harris, there are so many AAPI accomplishments to celebrate. And I know this is just the beginning as AAPIs continue to increase our representation in media, politics, business, and more. Thank you, and happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Thank you, Congresswoman Chu, and thank you for your continued advocacy on behalf of the AAPI community. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our next honoree, Alan Kim. Alan is this year's recipient of the RISE Award for Entertainment. At the age of seven years old, Alan Kim stole our hearts and earned rave reviews for his portrayal of David Yee, a first-generation Korean-American living in rural Arkansas with a heart condition in Lee Isaac Chung's American epic, Minari. For that role, Alan won the 2021 Critics' Choice Award for Best Young Actor Actress and has earned his place in history as the youngest BAFTA nominee for his nomination in the category of Best Supporting Actor in a Film. In 2021, Minari was nominated for six Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and it won the Grand Jury Prize and the Audience Award at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival. Alan is in the third grade, and his favorite subjects are math and science. He loves riding his bike and being creative in his free time. He also loves to be a silly brother to his older sister, Alyssa, and, and Kareem, his one-year-old rescue dog. Alan will next be seen in the independent film, Latchkey Kids. Alan, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. And I'm not crying today like I did at the Craig's Choice Award. First of all, thank you so much for giving me the RISE Award for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. I played the role of David in the Oscar-nominated film, Minari. Minari is about a Korean-American family that moves to Arkansas from California to get a better life. The grandma comes and babysits the children while the parents are away. But David didn't like the grandma at first, but does throughout the movie. I'm so proud of being a part of this film because this story is not just a story for a Korean American family. It's a story about all families. It's such an honor to share our story with it, the entire community. I believe if we know each other more, we will be closer friends. I really appreciate Mayor Garcetti, Councilor Member Lee, and everyone for hosting this ceremony. I hope everyone stays safe and healthy. Thank you. Congratulations, Alan. You are having such a huge impact on so many little boys and girls who see themselves in you. Seeing ourselves reflected in film and media is so important because it not only affects how others view us, but it affects how we view ourselves. And to give us more insight 
into the importance of Asian representation in Hollywood, I want to introduce Oscar winner Gina Davis. She is the founder and chair of the Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media, and her institute is the only research-based organization working collaboratively within the entertainment industry to create gender balance, to foster inclusion, and reduce negative stereotyping in family entertainment. It's my honor to welcome Gina Davis. Hello, everyone. My heartfelt thanks to Mayor Eric Garcetti, Councilman John Lee, Councilwoman Nithya Raman, and Commissioner Jessica Caloza for inviting me to this APAM opening ceremony. I'm so excited to take part in this event and to support the AAPI community. At my Institute on Gender and Media, our motto is see it, be it. We work collaboratively within the entertainment industry, and we know how representation in media impacts representation in real life. We see the power of numbers and data. With the rise in anti-Asian sentiment and hate crimes prompted by the pandemic, it's more important than ever to take action in raising representation of the AAPI community. This is why I'm so excited to announce our benchmark study examining AAPI representation in media in Hollywood the first major assessment of its kind. This data will be a measure toward progress and be a catalyst for change and accountability for AAPI representation. That's why I'm so heartened by the mayor's actions to emphasize the importance of supporting the AAPI community through this event and ensuing efforts. Thank you again for including me today. And at this time, I'd like to welcome Congresswoman Michelle Steele, representing California's 48th Congressional District. Congresswoman Steele. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Michelle Steele. I am so honored to join you today virtually to kick off Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. As one of the first Korean American women to ever serve in Congress, I know how important it is to support our AAPI community. As we kick off this special month, I want to extend my support to all of you and thank you for your great job you are doing as we continue fighting back against the pandemic. I am grateful for your support and for all of you. I'm grateful for your continued strength even in the face of terrible hatred and violence against our community. Hate has no home here. We live in the best country on earth. English is my third language and I'm serving in the United States Congress. I am living my American dream. The first time I looked up at the US Capitol after being sworn in, I had tears in my eyes. I want your kids and grandkids to have the same opportunity. I want to see our next generation achieve even more. I am proud to serve alongside other trailblazing members of our community in Congress. I wish you a wonderful celebration today and look forward to seeing you in person soon. Thank you. It is my privilege to introduce our next RISE honoree for his work in public service, um, the Attorney General of California, my friend, the Honorable Rob Bonta. Attorney General Rob Bonta is a child of the Civil Rights Movement, the son of activists. His mother, Cynthia, a proud Filipina, immigrated to California in the 1960s by three-week boat ride. His father, Warren, who grew up in Ventura County, was committed to service and social justice from a young age, joining Martin Luther King's civil rights efforts in Alabama to pass the Voting Rights Act. Both Cynthia and Warren instilled in their children that there was no higher calling than to serve others. Rob's parents were involved in the farm workers movement alongside Cesar Chavez and many others. It was during that time that Rob got his first lessons about equality and the importance of treating everyone regardless of where they're from or what role they played with dignity. He attended public schools and made his way to Yale University where he worked his way through college, cleaning laundry rooms to pay for books and tuition. While in college, Rob mentored children of color in the surrounding neighborhoods of New Haven. After college, Rob knew he wanted to use the law to fight for people wronged by others. He attended Yale Law School. After law school, 
Rob returned to California to fight injustice full time. He served nine years as a deputy city attorney in the San Francisco City Attorney's Office, representing the city and its employees before running for local office in Alameda County. In 2012, Rob became the first Filipino American in California history to be elected in the legislature, representing Assembly District 18. He quickly became a statewide leader in the fights for racial, economic, and environmental justice. Today, as California's Attorney General, and again, the first Filipino American to hold this seat, Rob seeks to use his position to win justice for California families, to help people make their lives better and improve all communities. Attorney General Rob Bonta, I am honored to present you with a 2021 RISE Award for Public Service. Congratulations. Wow, well, thank you so much, Jessica, for that kind introduction. Thank you for your friendship over many, many years. I appreciate uh, all of your, your support, collaboration, and, and partnership. And want to say a special shout out to my longtime friend, uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti, as well, for his leadership and helping put together th uh, this event. And thank you so much for the incredible honor of, of the RISE Award. It means so much to me, especially uh, now in, in, in this month of uh, Asian Pacific American Heritage Month in this moment of full-on state of emergency and state of crisis for our API community as we uh, fight the forces of hate across the uh, state and, and, and across the nation. And in this very special moment for me to have the, the honor and privilege of a lifetime, something I'm just so humbled by and, and appreciative of. Uh, thankful to the governor for his uh, trust in me and for uh, those who supported me along the way. Um, you know, being in this role is is just an incredible opportunity to help people and, and, and do good and make people's lives better. And that's what I think the role of the Attorney General is. I see it as being the people's attorney, uh, fighting for everyday folks who've been hurt and harmed, who've been abused and mistreated, and uh, to be their champion, to balance the scales of justice and uh, to help the little guy uh, um, from and stop let the little guy from being abused by the big guy who overreaches their authority or abuses their power. So, you know, right now, we know we're in such a, a painful moment full of fear and, and anxiety for the API community, the, the uh, attacks, uh, the violence, the hate has occurred too many times in, in too many places in too many ways. It's horrific and unacceptable. And uh, we're, we're fighting back and pushing back. And I'm thankful for our, our fierce and powerful API community and also so thankful that in this moment, the API community isn't alone, that we look to our left and look to our right, and we see our friends, our allies, our partners standing with us in solidarity, uh, in unity, in allyship. Uh, so many, too many throughout our history in California and in this nation have, have faced and uh, suffered the sting of hate and intolerance, and it's incumbent on us to, to push back. So we are right now, and uh, that's exciting because it's, it shows who we are as a state. In California, we, we take care of one another. And as your attorney general, I'm gonna take care of you. Uh, that's my job. Uh, your fights will be my fights. I'll have your back. Uh, I'll be your champion. And I'll make sure that we right historic wrongs, uh, fight injustice, and help as many people as possible. So thank you again for this incredible honor. I'm deeply thankful for it and honored to be here with you. Thank you so much. Congratulations again to you, uh, Rob, uh, Attorney General Rob Bonta, and thank you again for being here. At this time, I'd like to welcome Congresswoman Young Kim, representing California's 39th District. Hello, I'm Congresswoman Young Kim, and I'm honored to celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month with all of you. I'm happy to join and offer my thanks to Mayor Garcetti, Councilman John Lee, Councilwoman Nithya Raman, and Commissioner Jessica Caloza for co-hosting this event to recognize and celebrate the contributions of the AAPI community across Southern California and our nation. From business to science and technology, to arts and public service, Asian Americans have made countless contributions to the fabric of America. As one of the first Korean American women to serve in Congress, I am proud of the difference that Asian Americans have made and continue to make in communities across our country each and every day. 
As Asian Americans, this is deeply embedded in who we are. From supporting small business owners and fighting against hate to safely reopening our economy, Asian American issues are American issues. And I will fight to ensure that Americans of all backgrounds have the opportunity to achieve their American dream. Thank you, and I hope you all have a wonderful Asian Pacific American Heritage Month celebration. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Kim. And to present our next award, I'd like to introduce the Executive Director of LA's New Civil, Human Rights, and Equity Department, the incredible leader that we have here at the City of Los Angeles, Capri Maddox. Thank you, Commissioner Jessica Coloza. Um, it's truly a pleasure to be here. I am honored to join our mayor and other esteemed elected leaders community organizers and attendees for the opening ceremony of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Today, I have the privilege of recognizing an Asian American leader who has not only changed lives, lives here in Los Angeles, but across the nation. Manju Kakarne is the executive director of the Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council, also known as ABCOM. ABCOM is a coalition of over 40 community-based organizations that serve and represent the 1.5 million Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders here in Los Angeles County. They do a number of services through, um, as it relates to COVID relief, youth programming, advocacy, and so much more. In her decades of service to the AAPI community, Manju also served as the executive director of the South Asian Network, an organization dedicated to advancing the health, empowerment, and solidarity of South Asians in Southern California. But the reason that we are recognizing Manju today is for her tireless and courageous leadership to stop hate that's facing the AAPI community. And a lot of it's been happening in the last year. Early on in the pandemic, when no one else was noticing the rising tide of hate, Manju uh, connected ABCOM with the Chinese American Affirmative Action Group, CAA, as well as San Francisco State University to form Stop AAPI Hate. Stop AAPI Hate had a simple message, and it was to collect reports of anti-Asian hate that was happening across the country. It has now grown into one of the largest and most important hate tracking tools in the entire nation. Between March of 2020 and March 31st of 2021, Stop AAPI Hate has received over 6,000 reports of racism and discrimination targeting Asian Americans across the United States. Stop AAPI Hate has been featured um, in the Washington Post, the New York Times, NBC, and more. It is data-informed information that has led to policy programs and a national discor discourse about these issues. Manju's work is shaping the way our entire nation responds to this awful rising tide of hate. I wish we didn't need her talent to fight this fight, but we are blessed to have her leading this fight against hate. Um, and it is my distinct honor to introduce our RISE Award honoree, my friend and a true Los Angeles hero, Manju Kakarne. Thank you so much, Capri, for that very warm and generous introduction. Um, it's been so wonderful working with you um, since you took on the helm um, in our great city. I want to thank also uh, Council Members Lee and Council Members Raman. Um, it's just so wonderful to see you all in these positions of power in our city, along with Commissioner Coloza. Um, and I want to thank also Mayor Garcetti and City Attorney 
Attorney Fuhrer for their very kind words. Um, I'm just so humbled today to receive the RISE Award on behalf of APCON, the Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council. Um, as folks know, over a year ago, our communities in LA, our Asian American and Pacific Islander communities really began to see um, the struggles associated with COVID-19. But our 40 member organization really stepped up um, in big and small ways to address the uh, health issues and concerns, helping with vaccine distribution, with outreach, uh, mental health, providing direct services, helping community members who are seniors, who are victims of trafficking, uh, to work on housing and economic development during this crisis. Um, and what we also did, as Capri mentioned, is we joined forces with uh, Chinese for Affirmative Action in San Francisco State to develop and create Stop AAPI Hate. And as Capri mentioned, just today we've issued our most recent report indicating that there have been 6,600 hate incidents reported to us from across the country, and sadly, 2,400 of those are in California. These involve verbal harassment, discrimination in the workplace, in housing, in public accommodations, and sometimes they also involve physical attacks. Um, but we know that these go beyond just hate crimes to also hate incidents. And so it's so critical that we have comprehensive solutions. And so I'm really honored um, to work with members of the city council, um, with the civil rights and human rights division of our city government, and also with Attorney General Bonta, as well as um, Congresswoman Judy Chu and others uh, in Congress and Governor Newsom. Um, we need to work together to address what's happening in our communities. Uh, we need to develop these comprehensive solutions. Uh, it is only when we come together and partner that we are going to stop AAPI hate. So again, I wanna thank you all for this um, very kind and generous award, and I look forward to our continued collaboration. Thank you. Congratulations, Manju and APCON, and thank you so much for the incredible work your organization is doing on behalf of the AAPI community. You know, now I'd like to introduce State Senator Dave Min, representing the 37th District. Hi, my name is Dave Min, and I represent California's 37th State Senate District in the heart of Orange County. I'm honored to be able to welcome you all to today's kickoff event to celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month in Los Angeles. I want to thank the hosts of today's event, Mayor Eric Garcetti, Council Members John Lee and Nithya Raman, and Commissioner Jessica Coloza. This year's APA Heritage Month comes during a difficult time for Americans and Asian Pacific Americans. We've endured over a year of this COVID-19 pandemic which has killed over a half million Americans, sapped our economic strength, and been so taxing for our mental health and well being. And of course, we're facing an alarming surge in anti Asian hate that's hit every corner of our country and our state. For Asians, now is a time of incredible uncertainty and fear. We're being attacked in our homes, on the streets, in our places of work. We're being accosted, spit upon, physically assaulted, and murdered. Now, my colleagues and I in the California State Legislature are taking this issue incredibly seriously. We've proposed nearly two dozen bills to address anti-Asian hate, including three bills that I've authored. But legislation is not enough. Anti-Asian hate is surging because too many people remain silent in the face of hate. We cannot allow racists and haters to believe their views represent us. We need to loudly denounce hate whenever and wherever we see it. Now, there's a reason that America and California in particular have led the world. We're stronger because of our diversity, because of our immigration, because of our amazing API community. Now, this year's APA Heritage Month could not come at a better time. Brighter days are ahead of us. We can see that. I want to extend my best wishes to the API communities of Los Angeles and thank the city for inviting me to this wonderful event. Thank you so much, Senator Min. Now we have our final award this evening which is for Johnny Buell Lee, the owner of Koreatown Pizza Company. Johnny is a Korean American business owner and an advocate for small businesses in the local community. 
During the pandemic, he used his skills and experience to offer free marketing and business consulting to help promote hundreds of small businesses, community events, fundraisers, and food distribution programs. As a volunteer and co-founder for K-Town for All, Johnny is an advocate for neighbors experiencing homelessness in Los Angeles. He is deeply passionate about financial literacy and economic mobility, especially for under-resourced under communities. And he leverages the power of social media to empower his digital audience. In the coming years, Johnny hopes to become more vocal in issues, policies, and solutions surrounding environmental sustainability and renewable energy. It is my honor to present the 2021 Rise Award for Business to Johnny Buehle. Wow, uh, thank you guys uh, so much. This is totally rad and I'm definitely honored and humbled, uh, especially with all these amazing uh, people. Um, there's been an incredible amount of uh, challenges faced by all Angelinos. I mean, you know, given this pandemic, um, but you know what we have seen and what I've tried to focus on is in the midst of all of that, um, there is this deep, um, you know, resilience and um, determination and fight, you know, within the small business community that I'm, you know, really proud to be a part of. Um, what I do know is Angelinos definitely do not and will not go down without a fight. That is for sure. And uh, you know, I'm personally, I've just been blessed to be around many um, inspiring people who have risen. Uh, to the occasion and have chosen to support their neighbors and businesses every day and often in you know like simple but uh, profound ways and i think in the future you know when we look back on this wild period of time we'll be sharing real stories of resilience i'm super proud of the contributions of the asian american community in los angeles at large during forest um really overcame immense challenges and now we are witnessing our community unite in new ways as a response to the rise in these, you know, this, these devastating, brutal hate crimes. Amidst this, though, and I'm, what I'm focusing on is I'm encouraged to see so many new leaders that are being forged. They're, they're saying things like, I have to make my voice heard. And though, you know, that road is long and there are lots of challenges ahead, I believe we will move forward together, um, you know, stronger than ever. Um, I'm proud to, you know, have been in a position, you know, on the ground to help and contribute what I can to many local businesses, um, especially in Koreatown. Uh, big shout out to my wife who helps me uh, with all those efforts. I am galvanized to continue to serve and you know, support our communities. Um, I thank everyone here and you know, all the people out there who are really just putting in the work day to day on the ground. Uh, we see you, I see you, I encourage you, keep it going, keep grinding. I love this kickoff and celebration. And you know, I also see it as, um, a call to get really active and involved. Now is the time. And um, what a blessing. Uh, <laughs> this is super dope. I love this. Thank you guys so much. Major love. Thank you to everyone. Peace. Amazing. Congratulations again on your award, Johnny. And thank you so much to my co-chairs and co-MCs today to thank kick you. off. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so, I think to, to wrap up our program today and to wrap up our kickoff, we've heard so many amazing speakers and leaders in the Asian American community bring forth their story. And now we want to tell everyone watching, everyone listening, um, what can they do during Asian Pacific American Heritage Month? What, what event are you most looking forward to participating in? Um, I'm really excited about the Community Day of Service, which is happening on May 22nd. And I don't know if you want to tell people how they can find out more about how they can get involved in that, but you can do service um, opportunities across the city. Absolutely. Um, the Community Day of Service is so special. We had one just this past Sunday in El Pueblo, the birthplace of Los Angeles. And on the May 22nd event, we're actually going to be at six um, sites simultaneously across the city in Historic Filipino Town, Little Tokyo, Chinatown, Koreatown, Thai Town, Little Bangladesh. I think I got all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Good work. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Councilmember Lee? Uh, you know, we have a lot of different events coming up this month uh, to honor the, the Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. But one of the ones I, I'm very excited about was I'm going to be hosting a virtual um, showing of Minari and where we get to do question and answers with all of different actors and the director uh, of this amazing film. I mean, this film, if you haven't seen it yet, it's um, 
like we heard earlier, it's not just about the Korean American experience, it's about the immigrant experience, about being in a foreign place, really uh, showing the resiliency of family and the importance of what you call home. Uh, it's just an amazing film, and I'm just really excited to, to be able to host something like that. Amazing. Thank you both so much. And I hope uh, for those of you watching, if Alan didn't steal the show already and sold <laughs> you on the film, um, please go watch it. You can find all of our events and our programming for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month on our LA City website. You can visit uh, dpw.lacity.org. Um, and so that is dpw.lacity.org. And with that, we thank you for joining us. Happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Mm -hmm.